Well, this week we are going to make some folded laundry, folded clothing, to go in your miniature scene, whether it's going in your in a shop that you're making, in your laundry room of your dollhouse, on the bed, or in the drawers of your dresser. This is a project that's a lot of fun to make. I first got some as a swap and I kind of stole the idea from the swap I got many many years ago and I've changed it around and made it the way I make it. I'm sure there's other instructions online. So stay tuned and see how I make folded laundry. All right, so first off, I want to say a couple of things. We are filming in my dining room because my dining room is where I keep most of my sewing stuff for like most of the year. I only use the dining room on holidays, so this is my normal sewing room. So all my equipment for sewing is out here. Secondly, I've been sewing for right around 50 years, so I've got all the toys. If I use something and I don't explain it either in the video or the blog post, ask in the comments <clears throat> and I'll be happy to explain what I used. Sometimes I forget that people, that not everybody knows all this, these tools and toys and things that I use for sewing. So we have pre-cut three objects here. We have a piece of fabric and this is about two and a half inches wide by about six inches long. We're not going to use the whole thing but we're going to start out at that size so we've got plenty of space. We have another piece of fabric that is one inch by two inches. And we're going to do more with this over at the uh, sewing machine, or at the uh, ironing board. Then we have a piece of cardstock. This is seven eighths of an inch by one and a half. This is what our shirt will be built upon. We've got some other tools as we come to them. We'll talk about them. And like I said, the list of everything I use, I will try to get into the blog post. So let's move to the ironing board and do our first couple of steps. All right, so we'll try this again. I'm trying to get an angle where it looks like you guys can see what we're doing. So I have my iron set to a temperature that's appropriate to my fabric. I'm using a cotton fabric. Be sure and check the blog post where I'll talk about picking your fabric for this. Now we are going to, along that long edge, we need to fold over about a quarter of an inch. Um, and we need to press that down. So there, that's now pressed down. Now we are going to put our shirt like this and I'm trying to get this oriented the way I want it. I need to get this so that this will be about in the middle and I'm going to fold over this edge first that's not folded over. I'm pressing that so it will stay. Now we're folding this. Wow, that is really hot. And since this is really hot, this is just a bamboo skewer from the kitchen. One of my favorite things to use when I'm sewing or working with the iron on doll clothes or on miniature stuff. Okay. That's not quite as straight as I would like it. Now you have to decide, is this a man's shirt or a woman's shirt? And since I want to make it a man's shirt, I am going to fold over. This is going to be my short end. So I need my fabric scissors, which I left. Okay. I'm going to fold over and cut this back just a little bit to cut down on bulk. By having this like this, this is a man's shirt. If it was this direction, then I think it becomes a woman's shirt. I hope. All right, so I'm going to fold that down. Use my iron to help me hold it. Ow, that's hot. Now, and this is folded right along the top of that piece of cardstock I put in there. Remember, we folded this around our cardstock. Now we are going to go with this. And it's fine to press over the cardstock. That's, that's just fine. These scissors are only used for fabric, they're never used for for uh, crafting with paper. Now, I'm folding this over to kind of figure out where it is. 
I want to fold it so that the tops are even. And now we're going to do this. We're going to press it from both sides. And now this is just going to sit here for a minute while I do the next step. This product here is paper backed fusible webbing. And what I need to do, this is like the only paper I ever cut with these scissors. And yeah, you're in the camera kind of. I usually have a pair of scissors just for this over here, but I don't have them here today. Cut it about the size of this. I want to make sure it's slightly smaller than my fabric because I don't want to get this on my iron. Keep all things that might be sticky away from your iron. All right. Now this has kind of a, a rough side and a smooth side. The smooth side is the paper. The rough side is basically the glue. I just very quickly ironed it on there. Now I'm going to kind of crease my piece of fabric. This is not sticking. I'm not exactly following the directions for this particular fusible webbing. I need to get this up where I can see it. There we go. I'm going to peel the piece of paper back and you'll feel, feel that the paper is smooth and this has got a different feel to it now than regular fabric. That means that the glue has now transferred. Whoops, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but my glue stuff followed my paper. Now I'm going to very carefully fold this in half so that none of that gluey part sticks out using my bamboo, bamboo skewer. And I'm going to press that closed. That now glues this together. Oh, that's still really hot. And it will help the edges to not fray out when we get this put together. So now I'm going to move back to the table and we are going to finish our shirt. All right, so we've moved to the dining, back to the dining room table and since I will be working on top of my cutting mat that I use for fabric, which I've somehow gotten other stuff on, I am working on top of a piece of parchment paper. So this is our piece that we folded over there and this is our piece that's glued together. We have some tacky glue. And I'm going to put it out on the tray, and somewhere on my table, there should be, there it is, a toothpick. I'm going to open this up, and first apply some glue to these flaps. Pull them down. We're not gluing the whole thing. We're only gluing a small amount. So a little bit of glue on each of those layers. Because we don't want it to be glued down really hard. Now, it's important that you feel and make sure that you have the piece of the, the part of the fabric that has the cardstock. I can feel the cardstock in here. I can feel this side has none. We're working on the cardstock part. Now, this needs to be cut down to about a quarter inch and you want it to be pretty straight and I'm going to eyeball it because I can but if you don't feel comfortable with that use a ruler. Now we need this an inch and a quarter long and we need to make a fresh cut on all raw edges. All right. Find the middle. Make sure your fold is at the top. I'm going to dip that in the glue. And I'm going to stick this right here. And I'm going to glue this down. And now this glue will need to set up and dry for just a few minutes. Probably 10 minutes will be fine. In about 10 minutes, I'll come back and we'll finish this up. All right, so this has sat for approximately 10 minutes and that glue is set, and if I did this right, yeah, my glue here is still fine. So now we are going to turn this little strip into our collar, and I know it's hard to see through my fingers. Basically what we are going to do is fold it like that. 
Sorry if my voice keeps going out. I don't know why. I think it's allergies. Finally got over the winter cold, and I think allergies are hitting. Awesome. All right. Put that on the part that's going to be up past the fold. And because this is tacky glue, and because this tacky glue has had time to sit, it's even tackier. All right, we have a shirt with a collar that's not completely even, but close enough. Now, let's put some buttons on this. I have another piece of cardstock. Whoops, sorry about that. This was underneath the blade of the tripod. I'm sorry, didn't mean to make you guys bounce. Actually, I've got a piece of cardstock I've already been punching holes in. This is a 1 16th inch round punch, and you could do this with any color cardstock. It doesn't have to be white. I'm just putting white shirt buttons on this shirt. And since these things have a tendency to run away, I always punch a bunch. Hopefully I've got enough. Now, I am going to make a line of dots of glue. And I'm gonna try and get my glue dots pretty even. You can put as many or as few buttons as you like, or on some styles of shirts, you wouldn't have buttons. Um, there. Now I'm going to use the other end. I'm going to lick the end of that toothpick so it'll pick this up. And come on. Over the glue, there we go. There, so there we have a folded shirt. Now the glue will need to dry before you can do much with this, but let me move all this out of the way and I'll show you the ones I did the other day. Here's one. This one doesn't have the folded placket and I see I went crooked with my buttons. This one has the placket, which I like the placket because it gives a little dimension and it gives us a nice straight edge to put the um, buttons against. This one I made the front smooth and I put a lace collar on it. And the lace collar, let me find my lace over here, I just stuck it over to the side, is actually, so I can find the end that I cut from, I used this lace. And all I did was I cut, let's see, zoom in, see if I can zoom in and lay this down. Each of these little pieces of collar are just this portion of the lace. I cut that off and glued that on. You don't have to use the whole piece of lace. So that's just like that much of it. And then it's glued around to the back. So that's how easy it is to make a shirt to go in a dresser drawer. Now I have a dresser here. And I know that my dollhouse dressers the drawers, excuse the dust on the top of this. I pulled it out. This is yes, an empty drawer. Now, these will fit this way. These look really good sitting out. Let's get backed up a little bit. Oh, you were really close there. Sorry about that. All right, so yeah, they won't fit this way on these. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. They'll fit sideways in your drawers if you want to do that. So you can just pull them out. These look really cool stacked on top of the dryer in your dollhouse laundry room. Or if you're doing a shop and you want to have clothing for sale. If you really want to put them in your dollhouse drawers, just fold that bottom and make it fit. And if you're going to do that, you might want to use a clip. Let me, whoops, sorry. I keep bumping the camera. Use a clip like this and just kind of fold it for a couple of days. You, It's optional if you want to glue that. Fold that for a little bit. The cardstock will crease and then it will in fact, already it's better. Then they'll fit. It's up to you how you want to do that. They also look kind of cool just, you know, 
set them on top of the dresser or on the bed. But that's how easy it is to make folded laundry, folded clothing for your dollhouse or miniature scene. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you make some, show me. I want to see yours. Um, you can either send me a send me pictures via my email, which is I think it's the same as the channel name. It's Joanne's Minis at gmail.com. You can send them to me on Facebook. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, I encourage you to. It's a lot of fun, and I usually give you a sneaky peek at what we're doing each week. And if for some reason there's not a video, I let let you know there too. So make some minis, share your pictures with me, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.